Good morning. Now, in my efforts to build a whole Victorian wardrobe, there's one item of clothing that has been constantly eluding me, and that is the cloak. But today, that changes. A cloak is something that I've been searching for to add to my wardrobe for quite a while now, and I think I just found the perfect one. But before I tell you about that, what am I even talking about when I say a cloak? Before I get into that, there's a little bit of terminology that I need to talk about first. The first term that I will be using is the cape. Now, a cape, I think we all know what a cape is. It's something you think about when you think of superheroes, and they generally just cover the back of a person, and are a little bit shorter in length meaning that they're about knee length, which is still long for today's standards, but a lot shorter than a cloak. A cloak is generally a lot longer. They can go all the way to floor length or usually somewhere in the knee to shin length. Cloaks are meant to cover the full body, so it'll wrap all the way around the front and generally just have a little bit of a front enclosure. That can be buttons all the way up and down it or just something at the top. Something else that differentiates a cloak is that they often have a hood or some sort of head covering to keep your head warm and dry. The last term that I'll be using is actually my favorite out of all of these, and that is the capelet. A capelet is mixed between a cape and more of a modern coat. Capelets are very long as well. They sit usually around knee length, and it's pretty much, like I said, just built as a coat. Built right into that coat and sits right on top of the regular coat layer is a cape, and those will just sit on the back again, coming around the sides, and go to about elbow length. You lose body heat out of the top of you, so it helps keep the body heat in, as well as it protects you from the rain and snow because that usually sits right on your shoulders. Capes and cloaks are some of the first garments known to be worn by people and can be traced all the way back to 500 BC in Greece. They're very simple garments, so that's why it can be traced all the way back that far. They take very, very little sewing, even no sewing at all sometimes. Another reason for this is that they are very versatile pieces of clothing to wear. Because of the shape in it and because of all that versatility, you can sleep in it, you can walk in it, you can work with it, you can sort of do whatever in it. The cloak then made its way from Greece over into Rome, and that's where you see it very popularized. If you were to go online and search for a cape or a cloak, you'd most likely come across the Roman panula, which is a very long cloak with just an enclosure at the front and a hood to it. It's the most stereotypical type of cloak that you can pretty much find these days. Another reason that this garment has been able to survive all of this time is because of the materials that it is made out of. Cloaks are most commonly made out of wool or some other tough material, and the wool does a great job of shedding off water. Wool can absorb almost its whole weight in water before it will actually soak through, so it's a really, really great way to stay dry in the rain and stay warm in the snow and poor conditions before indoors were invented to live in. Militaries around the world still use these in today's world because they're such great garments. Military installations such as the US Marine Corps as well as the Italian Carbonari, which I think are the coolest looking military I've ever seen, use these because it is, again, a great way to keep warm and also you can hide weapons underneath them. You can hide like a sword or anything you'd want. Now, even though you can see these in modern times, they mostly started to phase out around the 1830s because that is when the sewing machine was invented. The sewing machine just allowed for mass manufacturing of coats instead of the cloak, which often gave a little bit better movement. And also this is when you started seeing a lot of more modern wars. And in those wars, coats were often issued. And in the military world, that is sort of where cloaks sort of went out of fashion in favor for the coat. In your everyday life though, you'd still see a lot of capes and cloaks around. And that leads up into the Victorian and Edwardian times when you see the popularization of the capelet, which I would have to say is my favorite out of all of these three. You'll see a capelet being worn by people like Sherlock Holmes, which really made it an iconic thing. But that leads me into my own world because that is what I have purchased. And it is a capelet and I'm super excited to show you. So let me show you. Even though what I purchased is a capelet, yes, I'm still going to call it a cloak because I think cloak just sounds so much cooler. When looking for this item though, I looked online and found a vintage one used for $70, so you can't beat that. This is actually a women's garment, which I think gender roles for clothes is stupid, so I don't care. 
An easy way to tell this is that the buttons are on the left side instead of the right side like they'd be on a men's coat. I'm also super happy to be able to reuse a vintage coat like this instead of buying more fast fashion and trying to help the environment the best that I can. The fit on it is almost perfect. I just need to add a little pleating at the waist just to make it a little more form fitting. To add those pleats, I am just folding over a section of fabric on each side of the waist and just simply stitching it down. I don't claim to be good at tailoring and I will be the first to admit that I kind of have no idea what I'm doing. My method to learn how to sew has always been trial and error, so that's what I'm doing with this. I was very, very careful when I did this to make sure that I'm sewing it even. I don't want one side to have the larger pleat than the other. And after a little bit of sewing, here is my cloak. Because the pleats were sewed on either side of the waist, it really made the sides at the bottom flare out, and I love that bell shape that it has now. I am super duper excited to have this be part of my wardrobe now, and I can't wait for every excuse in the world to wear it. <laughs>